In today's video, we are going to be replacing the PCV valve on my 1999 Toyota 4Runner. Now you might be thinking, PCV, that's got to be an acronym, and you'd be correct. PCV stands for Positive Crankcase Ventilation, and this valve right here is responsible for that. As your engine runs, there is going to be even the smallest gap between your cylinder heads and the piston rings. And that little gap is going to allow vapors to pass by. These are known as blow-by gases. And eventually, pressure builds and builds inside of the crank case. And this is no good. We need to find a way to alleviate that pressure. And that's where the PCV valve comes into play. Now, if your valve isn't functioning properly, those vapors are going to continue to build pressure and they're going to find a way to escape. And that usually occurs in the form of breaking a gasket which is why it is so important to make sure that your PCV valve is replaced at its regular maintenance interval. Now to do this repair on my 4Runner, you're going to need a few pieces. We've got a rubber grommet that goes into the valve covers. We've got the valve itself, and then we also have the hose that connects to the intake. And if you would like, you can have constant tension clamps that go on the end of the rubber hose and that's just for extra security to make you feel comfortable that this hose isn't going to go anywhere. You can also reuse your old hose but typically these hoses are brittle they might split uh, so it's best to just get a new one. And so there you can see the PCV valve and then there's the hose as it connects to the intake manifold. Now over the past few days I have tried my best to spray this down with WD-40 in hopes that it will help to remove the valve a little bit easier. I'm going to try and do it by leaving the silencer box on for now, but we may need to remove it. So now that we've got the hose, the vacuum line off of the valve, this is where it connects to the um, to the actual intake manifold. So we'll pull this off. And since I don't really care about this hose anymore, we're not reusing it. it looks like it's tearing a good bit, as you can kind of see. So there it goes. Again, it's nice to buy a new hose. This one's very stiff, very brittle. You can see there's a crack in it, so we don't want to reuse that again. And so now here is the valve. You can see it's seated down into the valve cover. I know some people have said that these are pretty brittle. You need to be careful not to get little plastic fragments inside the, the valve cover on top of the cylinder head, so we'll be careful of that as we pull it out. So I see what people mean by the plastic being brittle. I was trying to pull this one off. You can see it, it, it broke right off. On a lighter note though, you can actually see the internals of the valves, so that's pretty neat. Quick update, so still haven't gotten it out, and part of the original rubber grommet, you can see it's actually missing right here. I was trying to chisel this out, and it broke and popped off. So I guess that is the plastic that other people refer to. And so now, I've almost got the valve out. You can see the rubber grommet starting to show down there as it's coming out. So I'm going to pull it the rest of the way. Okay, so I just got it to pop free. And man, this thing is grody. And so you can see that's where the PCV valve goes right there. And you see all those little tiny pieces? That is the original grommet. It's hardened. That's what falls into the valve cover. So I'm going to be really careful as I remove all of those pieces. So here's one piece that I just got out. I didn't really play the game of operation as a kid, but I feel like this is the moment where those skills would be most needed. So I just snagged this piece out. And when I did, the lip on it, pulling it out, dropped the rest of the plastic down, so I gotta fish that out. I think I have now removed all of it. This is the bottom piece of that grommet. 
And if you put these two pieces together right here, there's no gaps or missing chunks, so I think we're good. Now I just double checked with my inspector camera. I think all of the plastic is out. While it is super goobery down there, I think we're good to put in the new valve. Now first thing we're gonna do is slide our new hose on. Okay, so we've got that hose slipped on. So now let's go ahead and put in the valve. And just for your reference, here are the two pieces. So we've got the rubber grommet down here on the bottom and then the valve itself. So we're gonna go ahead and drop those in. <sighs> all right, now I believe we've got it seated down all the way. So we're gonna attach the vacuum line. Okay, so we've got the new hose installed. The valve is in place. We're gonna reconnect this vacuum line right here that slid off. And we should be good to go ahead and give it a test. Now the actual startup is uh, pretty uneventful, so I figured I would just show you all of the bits and pieces that I pulled out. So you've got the top portion of the PCV valve here and then you've got the bottom portion. Here's one of the springs that uh, lives in the upper portion of the valve and this was in fact a Toyota PCV valve. I don't know if it was the original or not but the part number here is 12204-62010 so who knows it could be the original but definitely was time for uh, a replacement. You can see all the, the grime and goo that's down in there. And then the what used to be rubber grommet is now uh, hardened plastic. Uh, so it was good that we got that out of there in all of its many pieces along with the hose that we were seeing some, some minor splitting. So that pretty much wraps up the job. Overall, it took me about an hour, maybe a little bit longer. If your valve has been replaced in the past, it should be a little bit shorter of a period of time to actually complete the job. Overall, it only cost me about 20 bucks in the parts, and then my labor was free. You're gonna need needle nose pliers or some, some type of plier. The needle nose helped me because I had pieces that fell down into the valve cover, so that helped. You're gonna need uh, potentially some gloves, uh, depending on how dirty your engine bay is. Mine was pretty dirty, but I was fresh out of gloves. A little pick tool would be nice to help get the hose off, otherwise just muscle it off. Uh, you're probably not gonna reuse it anyway. And then, of course, use a little bit of patience. So, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope it helped out a little bit. And with that, I'll see you in the next one. Oof, seems as if I've nicked my finger there. A little bit of blood. Oh well.